five o'clock. Thank you to um, Thursday uh, to the cabinet meeting of Thursday, of October. Um, welcome um, our guests in the main chamber. So, item one on the agenda is meeting. Um, is it proposed by somebody that that is a true record? Councillor Ian Stevens, is there a seconder for that? Debbie Andre? Take two steps from my Okay, thank you very much. If you can um, not use you use and pay for the mistake of not using the microphone, we do need the microphones used for those people listening online, please. Um, uh, item two on the agenda is declaration of interest. Is there, is there anyone wishing to declare an interest? Councillor Paul Fuller. So, I just wanted to declare an interest in um, the item 5A. Um, I am a uh, uh, magistrate, so justice of peace, and I am uh, trained in dealing with domestic abuse. Thank you. Councillor Jarman. Different from me. Thank you very much. Any of further declarations? No. Okay, thank you. Um, item three on the agenda is public question time. We have no written um, questions and we have no members of the public. So I'll move on to item four on the agenda, which is uh, chairman's announcements. Uh, not too much to report, really, because I did most of the reporting at um, full council. But uh, just to say that uh, myself, the chief exec, and Councillor Michael Lilly um, signed its pledge to the island and its own staff to prioritise the mental well-being of all staff and residents on World Mental Health Day on Monday. On the same day, we also launched the second round of the small grants for mental health projects, which is around £50,000. This enables our residents to have somewhere to go and talk, as it is about people who are feeling low in life talking to others who care. As an administration, we care for our island people. So that's my only announcement to make. Thank you very much. I'm going to defer item 5A and B um, temporarily because I know Councillor Lobb is um, trying to get back uh, to, to join us for the meeting. So I will move on straight on to item 6A, which is the report of the Cabinet Member for Climate Change, Environment, Heritage, Human Resources and Legal and Democratic Services. Councillor Jonathan Bacon. Thank you, Leader. Um, so this report is our, about our new procurement strategy for the period 2022 to 2025, um, or to put it simply, how we buy stuff. Um, it was discussed at some length at Tuesday's scrutiny meeting. Um, I, I think, I, I don't want to reiterate everything that was said there. It is based on four key themes local community wealth building, climate and environment, commercial approach and skills and capabilities. And I hope people notice the order in which those uh, four themes are presented. And also there are a set of underlying principles. Um, there was some discussion at scrutiny about uh, emphasis on value for money. Um, it is, of course, one of the key principles, as uh, made clear on page 19 of the document. Um, but I'm frankly more than happy with the suggestion that was made at scrutiny to make clear the importance of that by bringing it forward in the document. I think uh, the notes from scrutiny suggest putting it on page three. Well, actually, I was going to put it on page two because uh, I will be writing an introduction to the document, and I thought I would tailor my introduction to uh, include value for money as uh, one of those key principles in the uh, introduction to what follows. Um, other than that, as I did at uh, Tuesday's meeting, I would draw attention to first the themes that is presented and set out on page five, namely local community wealth building. I know all those around the table um, have read through that. 
and as it says um, after the list of um, pillars, as they referred to, um, that a key aim of the strategy, and I think this is important about, as I say, how we buy stuff, this strategy shall embed the local community wealth building into the council's procurement processes. Commissioners shall be required to consider how their contracts can encourage as much money as possible within the local economy for the benefit of local communities. Um, and the only other thing I'd say is just to remind people um, that this is the strategy. As the action plans within set out, it will be followed by a lot of uh, further detailed operational uh, documentation and uh, processes that will put those themes and particularly local community building into effect. So, leader, there's no more I'd wish to say. I'll obviously uh, answer any questions there might be around the table, but otherwise, um, I would propose uh, the uh, that cabinet approves the uh, procurement strategy con contained as it is, uh, is represented as Appendix One, which is about five of the covering report, and I would look for a second. Thank you. Um, and if I can be minded to say, you're quite right about the um, uh, scrutiny papers that the committee formally supported the procurement strategy, um, uh, and it was just a uh, and it was just a comment about moving it to B. But if we can move it to two, that's even better to make that more um, more worthwhile. Um, Councillor Fuller has seconded. Is there anyone wishing to speak to the item? No, okay then. So the recommendation is cabinet approves the Isle of Wight Council procurement strategy can change at appendix one of this report. All those in favour, please show. That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. I did um I'm a I didn't give apologies to Councillor Julie Jones Evans who's um feeling a bit under the weather. Um she is online but um but she is not, not feeling well enough to be on and not want to box with John. So we wish her well, speedy recovery. Okay, so we move on to um, item uh, number seven of the report, which is Councillor Ian Stevens. That's a report of the Cabinet Member for Digital Transformation, Housing, Homelessness and Poverty, and it's the annual progress report on housing strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just want you to look at the recommendation, which is on page 77. Uh, cabinet notes the housing strategy 2020 to 2025 uh, um, as contained in the appendix one. Um, before we move to appendix one, however, I'd like I'd like to draw your attention to page 78, which the action plan supports, which are the strategy priorities one, two, six: uh, new housing supply, housing affordability, private sector housing, partnerships, homelessness, and housing need along with special housing needs and vulnerable people. What I would say is there's a lot of background work going on, on with that. And uh, as it says in the strategy uh, action plan, we've now appointed a um, housing manager, albeit part-time, but um, I know that the uh, chief, chief exec and myself are working to uh, make, uh, uh, shall I say, a more robust um, uh, team. And uh, that's it. That's in progress. As I said, the uh, the action plan is, is uh, coming into being on the on the back of uh, a, a strategy which has been updated uh, under our our administration to uh, realise the uh, priorities that we set out. Um, what I would like to draw your attention to, and I've, I've got it here, it's done figures. I like to quote the actual figure, other than, other than the approximation. And um, since uh, 2012 to 13, and this is a, with reference to affordable homes, and as you know, uh, it's 80% uh, affordable. We're trying to get that down um, to other means, such as the island plan, to get put it down to about 62%, um, so that it can be affordable to islanders. Um, what I would draw your attention to is the 733 over, the, over that 10 year period. In the two two years, or coming into the two years that we're we've been in administration, 
we now reach the uh, 300 uh, affordable homes mark. And uh, I would say that uh, that that certainly is a vast improvement from 2019 to 20, when only six affordable homes were completed, and in 2018 to 19, when zero was uh, reported uh, built. And prior to that, there was a number of 18. So we've moved a long way, and we're going to continue to move a, a long way on, on that, as I say. Um, but I've got a very active and very supportive um, uh, new uh, uh, manager of housing, very, very active. We've set up meetings with our RPs, the registered providers, and indeed uh, private developers as well to see what uh, what's coming on stream, what they've already got, how we can actually support the uh, ways forward. Um, we've also taken taken on board the uh, uh, Brownfield Release Fund, and we and we've uh, insights out to uh, expressions of interest. We're now evaluating that, um, so that's coming forward. Um, looking at also, I'm just I've, I've, I'll turn now to uh, page page four of the appendix. And uh, you'll see uh, activity update September 2022, 20, uh, rough sleepers accommodation project. Um, we've moved forward with actually purchasing um, five units, which obviously at this time of the year, moving into the winter months is uh, most welcome. We're, we're looking at uh, trying to extend that, but once again, we have to prove value for money and uh, due diligence on whatever money we spend. Um, what I would say is that um, the, uh, and I'll draw you back to actually the financial implications on paragraph 29 at page 81. Um, the housing strategy and action plan refers to matters which are already reflected in approved budgets and where additional resources are required to deliver the housing priorities set out in the strategy. The financial implications of these will be evaluated and reported once plans have been developed. So it's very much a, Ongoing, the um, action plan is uh, always moving because it's current, and uh, I would say that uh, as far as the as far as everything is concerned, we're moving forward. We, we as you, as you, and the action plan will um, refer to because we are now a registered provider ourselves. This was put in place earlier this year, so we can also now go into the rental market and, uh, and onwards. At this moment in time, we, we do have housing stock, but um, we're looking at uh, how how we can utilise that. Some of it's um, uh, shared ownership, and some of it is uh, what can I say uh, fully fully owned by the authority. We have to do a, an exercise on that to see what what there is and what there isn't. So obviously, different um, different properties are under different ownership, so we ascertain what, what, it, what there is and what there isn't. It's a lot of work. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm, we're pulling together a team and the team will continue to work uh, uh, to get the best benefits we can for our, uh, for our residents on the island, our, uh, our, our homeless uh, families who are in rental, rental accommodation, some in caravans and some, some in bed and breakfast. It's, um, I always said, and when I when I stood before um, when I stood before uh, corporate scrutiny in the past, I've actually said I can't defend the indefensible. Now, people people laugh at that, and they and they seem to think we're not succeeding. We are moving forward in a positive manner. But what I would say is, I was one person um, living in a caravan with a family, and uh, I was I was hearing a councillor saying how successful they were. Um, I'd be most most miffed. So what I'm saying is that we're moving in the right direction. The uh, action plan supports the strategy, and uh, I'm going to just say that this is for noting, and I would I would ask for the support of uh, fellow cabinet cabinet members because quite honestly, this is a this is a job and a half to try and turn turn the ship around. As I quoted earlier. Some of the um, some of some of the areas where we did not even uh, produce one affordable uh, unit is not acceptable. 
and it's 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 heartbreaking to me when I when I see that young young children are in temporary accommodation, trying to uh, pick up their education and move forward in life. So, um, as I say, financial implications are as I've as I've read out earlier. The uh, six strategic priorities are covered within the action plan, and there'll be many more things coming forward in the future. But as I say. It's, it's more positive than it has been, and uh, I'll leave it at that. But uh, I'm open to questions, of course. Thank you. Councillor Stevens, um, I'll come to you after the committee has spoke. Uh, Councillor Paul Fuller. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Councillor Stevens. I'm, I'm really welcome the um, the item on the um, what, what makes affordable housing affordable. We know that affordable housing on the island is not affordable to island, to island residents. And I really welcome the fact that there is mention there about the housing tool to be used to identify the areas where housing would need to be 60% of market level or lower to be considered affordable for island residents. Um, yeah, there, there, there's a lot of mention about affordable housing within, within the paper, but I don't see any reference to actual social housing. Social housing is really what we are looking for. You know, certainly for those for, for many residents on the island. Um, um, and but I, I, I get that what you're saying is about changing the parameters locally. We can incorporate the social housing needs we and, and the demand that we have on the island. So I welcome that. So I'm very happy to second uh, uh, support in this motion. Thank you. Okay, can I bring Councillor Phil Jordan? Thanks, Chair. Um, great to hear, Ian, uh, some of this work. Fantastic. I'm um, really pleased that uh, we've become a registered provider after quite a long time. Uh, not quite sure what we could have done in the past uh, um, to address some of the social housing, not being a provider, but I know there are other mechanisms, but uh, uh, they're, they're complex. Um, the previous housing company, and I'm, I'm right in saying I think that um, it was set up or even maybe purchased. It does sound very much like a bought off the shelf company. It had one director, um, no bank account, and uh, it, it apparently no audit or scrutiny process built into the whole process of a uh, separate limited company, trading company. Uh, sounds completely and utterly impossible to run for a local authority that may have been investing public money into it. So I think we can surely say, Ian, that that, that housing company that was set up uh, wasn't really set up as a housing company and was untradeable. The uh, uh, reason I'm saying this is I'm, I'm hearing lots of narratives that refer to this housing company that actually isn't a housing company that was fit for any purpose. But uh, just moving on from that, if I'm wrong with that, I'm happy to be corrected, uh, uh, Chair and Ian. But I'm, I'm really pleased that a new company's structure is being set up uh, correctly and uh, with a, the appropriate structures in place, uh, including audit and scrutiny over, over that, public money, public investment. We need to be able to all, uh, uh, audit it and scrutinise it. So I'm really pleased that it's being set up. And because of that, I realise there are numbers of legal matters uh, that need addressing, taking time, uh, but we've got to get that done correctly uh, and uh, so that it, we're in full compliance. So my question is, after that little bit of a ramble, Ian, is um, what, what does remain now to be finalised to uh, uh, create the housing company that we can start trading with? Thank you, Chair. Well, we have to um, uh, research and review our assets and uh, see what we what is appropriate to uh, transfer over. This is this is a, a, a bit of a drawn out process. We also have to look at the litigation and, and uh, obviously we're we're utilising um, Bev and Britain to uh, advise us uh, through that period. But we but also. Our legal department are, are onto are onto that, and uh, we're, we're moving forward with that. So, all in all, we we can we we, we can say that we're looking at a robust um, company or facility to actually make sure that due diligence is followed uh, with every aspect. 
because we're dealing with public funding. You referred to the um, the initial um, entity that was uh, registered with uh, Company House. I can only say that when 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 I looked at it initially, it didn't seem, and it, it certainly I've got advice on it wasn't fit for purpose. Um, you know, it's a hard job to put anything through to uh, start trading. I'll leave it at that. But as I say, once we once we once we get everything up and running, and the registered provider aspect will come in come in a little bit stronger. And, and the other thing I will say is that we're not just reliant on on the company. We've got three or four other um, uh, tools in the in the box, if you like, to to uh, bring forward. One is one is um, looking with our and we, as I said, we've met with uh, other registered providers on the island, and indeed some some people that are developing to make sure that we take full account of what is what is going on at this moment currently, but also historically looking at the um, planning uh, applications that have been granted in the past, to see if we can. Um, uh, Elicit what is what's the problem? Why aren't you building at this moment? Why haven't you built? Um, so it's a, it's gaining an all-round picture, um, Councillor Jordan, on to uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we do we do whatever we can, and the company that we will set we will be setting up, and we are setting up, is going to be uh, uh, having various uh, elements within it, from renting to purchase to uh, uh, to selling and so on and so forth. So we're we're trying to encapsulate out that in a in a company and uh, uh, make it as robust and open to scrutiny and uh, if you like uh, falling into uh, the uh, the lines of our due, dil due diligence with the public purse. You and I, if we wanted to set up a public company, uh, set up a property company, could probably go and do that within in a few days. The public purse is a little bit different. We've got to have due diligence. We've got to make sure that we're doing the right thing, and to, and to that end, we will be taking advice from every quarter we can. But moving it, it's going to take a little bit of time. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. But we're we're on the case. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Johnson Bacon. Thank you, Leader. Um, I, I thought I ought to step in that a little bit here because uh, lawyers were mentioned. Um. <laughs> And to paraphrase the phrase, well, now, uh, to paraphrase that old phrase, some of the lawyers I mentioned, let's blame all the lawyers. But um, recently I took on the legal services uh, brief as part of my portfolio. So aware of the importance of um, this stream of work, uh, I made it uh, incumbent on myself to check what the position was of the company. And Councillor Jordan's quite right. What was inherited was a name on a shelf, and no more than that. Um, basically, we we have the legal team lined up and ready as soon as the necessary work, which you referred to, Councillor Stevens, the research and review of assets. Once that's done, um, then the legal instruction can be given, and that work will not take long at all. Um, but it's a matter of creating the formal documents, the memorandum, and articles. Um, they cannot be done until that, re that research, that review of assets has been done. But once that is done, uh, it will, that piece of legal work will be done swiftly. So please don't blame the lawyers on this one. Um, we're poised and ready to act as soon as we can. Okay. Um, is there anyone else wishing to speak? No, then I'll convene in Council um, Peter Spring. Thank you, Gita. I have a question for Pete, or a question for Pete. Um, you refer to the housing strategy. I looked that up uh, online and was a bit startled to be confronted with a picture of Barry Abraham. And the housing strategy that you, you are still operating from is the conservative previous administration housing strategy complete with forward and picture still Barry Abrahams. So in 18 months of your administration, you've not formed your own housing policy. How do you explain that? I've heard that I like Barry Abrahams. He's 
probably he's probably, he's probably more photographic than I am. But but having said having said that, uh, having having said that, having having said that, um, we have put priority, uh, priority number one as housing only. So whilst I I can say I. I could take issue with you because what we don't do is if 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 a strategy or a policy is aligned with ourselves and you should be very grateful for that. Um, if, a, if if we if we agree on certain elements of that, why should we why should we trash them? Why should we go and change it? I mean, I, I, I agree with you that Barry that Barry's photograph might not be on there, but that's not down to but that's not down to me. That, that's um, uh, down to whoever that full of the print. What I would say is I'm not I'm not averse to uh, sharing a little bit of uh, what we're doing with uh, Councillor Ab Abraham or indeed yourself. What I would say is that um, priority prioritising and looking at the figures uh, that were there in the past and looking at the way that uh, our, uh, a company was uh, an entity was put forward at um, uh, to company's house. Doesn't seem to me to be appropriate and uh, in uh, in support of that strategy. So we're we're supporting the strategy. If you think if you think it's uh, the conservative strategy, then bear in mind that the uh, the work plan underneath it is fully the, the uh, alliance administration that actually aren't playing at housing, aren't playing at homelessness. We're actually going to uh, Endeavour to do what we can, and that didn't. That doesn't. That doesn't concur with your previous uh, conservative administration of zero affordable housing in 2019. The um, strategy, and perhaps you could give me a written answer on this, but the housing strategy you say that you've taken parts of it. In fact, all six priorities that you state on page 78 are the. Um, previous administration's priorities, and uh, I couldn't find, when I read through the policy, uh, any changes to the policy. But perhaps you could give me a written quest, uh, answer to my question, pointing out these changes to the policy. Because I suggest, Councillor Stevens, in fact, you're simply using exactly the same policy. Perhaps you could give me a written quest answer to that, because I've got more questions rather than take up time. Oh, okay. I've just answered that. I, 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 Councillor, 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 Councillor Spink, I've just answered that. We, as um, we, in the Alliance administration, aren't here to try and wreck or rubbish a previous ad administration. If we agree with a priority, we agree with it. The difference between the strategy that the Conservative administration took forward was that it was not supported, not supported by activity, action plans, or anything else. And the results prove it. So let's just say that whatever you say about six priorities and the, print, uh, and the printed word, let's start to talk about the activity, the action, the momentum, the traction, and the, and the actual way that we're moving forward. Which it appears to me, and I won't go back over the numbers. I'll, I'll talk to you about about the strat, the six, the six strat lines for priorities there. But what I won't go back over is the numbers because they speak for themselves. The last administration were not as active as we have been in the last eighteen months, and that's and that's a fact. And you, you can't argue with that. I'm afraid that is that is fact and figure. You can. Mince the words of a of a strategy. That's fine, but let's get let's get forward with the with the plan that is going to support activity for the people of the Isle of Wight. You want to play you you want to play bat and ball with words. I want to actually put the bat and ball away and get on with the, get on with the business of the housing our homeless. Thank you. I'd like to get on with that business as well. That's why I've come here tonight to try and uh, expose that nothing much is happening. Now they. 231 affordable houses that were built between 2021 and 21-22. Stroke 20-21, stroke presumably those are calendar year, calendar month years. Yes, right. 
So you weren't even in power then. I think you'll find that that is rolled into the, uh, and this is why if you look at the strategy, the way that things are, things are written out, that there was a target of 300 dwellings, and that 300, that 300 dwellings has been taken into consideration. I'm not saying you did, you know, I'm, I'm not a bricklayer. I don't go out and build, I don't go out and build houses. What I do is I come in here, argue, and try and put the, put the, uh, 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 the wheels in motion to actually improve the situation for our, our homeless on the Isle of Wight. I'm not here to, I'm not here to play ping pong with you. I'm here to actually say what we're doing. And if you go to the, if you go and talk to the officers, perhaps you haven't, if you go and talk to the officers, over a three-year period, that was that. Those were the figures, and that was the target. I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change years round to actually try and suit targets. Targets are the targets. Three years, three hundred houses. Not a target. In your report, you say that 231 affordable homes have been built from 20 from 2020 to 2021, 21 to 22. And you seek, as I understand it, to take credit for that. In fact, the 20 to 21 figures you weren't even in power for. And I suspect that the 21 to 22 figures were in the pipeline, given that it takes some time to get planning permission by the previous administration. So I'll move on. I do have some questions, Councillor Nunn, which I think I'm is right sorry. I should be permitted to ask. Sorry, um, you know. I it's okay for you to come in and ask one, but this is, this is, um, I've got a number of my people with the committee that wish to come in and speak. I will come back and no, give I you one of the questions. I think it's important to respect that I'm permitted to ask these questions. And if I may say so, please. <coughs> I think it's important that I ask these questions. And if I may, may say so, if Councillor Stevens didn't give such long answers, unnecessary long answers, my questions wouldn't take as long. Okay, I'm going I'm no, to bring wish in. To ask yes. this. There's no point inviting councillors to come to cabinet if they can't take a re ask a reasonable number of questions on an important matter. Okay, but, 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 but we do have scrutiny for that. Yeah, it is quite right. But all of our reports go through scrutiny. Anyway, but. Uh, please, don't go. please don't go. Yes, you will be. Can I ask but, uh, one question? One hang question. on, hang on. Hang on. Right. Stop, please. Can I please bring in Councillor Love, who's just come in, and then I will bring you back in once the cabinet members have spoke. So, Councillor Love. Sorry, but that. Thank you. Um, I hate to see these sort of fractures and exchanges because they're totally unnecessary. Um, but. My concern listening to some of the questions is we seem to be going into a wider debate when what we are doing here is considering the paper that's before cabinet. And of course, any questions relating to that and the content of it are perfectly valid and justifiable. My concern in listening to what is being said is that it is a wider discussion, but I don't know if uh, Councillor Spink is attempting to have that with Councillor Stevens, um, but it seems to be going beyond the bounds of decisions of business. And that's Okay, Councillor Love, then I think it was Councillor Fulham. I think I'm actually going to put Bob because he, he, in fact, I think um, it's just. I think the point is, is, is that this is cabinet and it's a different process from. Um, from it's a different process from scrutiny. That would be my point. I think that the point is. is Becoming very political instead of doing business in who said what, who said when, who claimed this, who claimed that. Uh, quite frankly, I don't think it's very interesting. We're only interested in where we are now and where we want to be. That's what this would be matching to me. But, you know, if you want to start using words like expose, expose what? That, that's a, that itself is a very direct way of actually working and moving forward. We all those it was not um, the previous administration. We all agreed that those were all of our aims, and uh, it's not a bit of the council. 
this is where we get into trouble. They were ours collectively, as will these be when we finish, whether different parties agree or not, but collectively the council has got it. So thank you, Councillor Love. Did you want to come back in, Councillor Fuller? And then I'm just going to have to speak for a question. Thank you. Um I understand what Councillor Spink is saying, but I also remember being with the cabinet member on the previous administration, the independent administration there, and a lot of the work that myself and Julia Baker Smith have also did about affordable housing. Affordable housing crosses party boundaries. It's currently a corporate priority. It's important we do, we work as a whole council, to make sure we put the housing needs of our community, and particularly those people in our community. First, and I think that getting away and trying to polarise why we're going doesn't do us any any favours at all. So I think that we should forge on ahead with this. We have to. We are respecting what the previous administration did, as as the previous administration um, promoted what myself and Julia was doing, planning and housing there. Um, we are working for the common for the common goal there, and let's not let's not let's not fight about it. It's it just. To me, it's common sense. We need to give our families, our young people, our older residents, decent homes. We need to give them a, sh um, a roof over their, their head. And that is what is important. And speak. Do you think you just do one, one final question, please? And then put the rest in writing to Councillor Stevens for him to give you a, a full answer, please? Um, I'd just like to say, because it's only right that I, I say, having a number of cabinet members have um, criticised my approach. The reason, if I may say so, that I have taken the approach that I've taken is because Councillor Stevens addressed um, the cabinet on the basis that it's a marked improvement on this administration. And therefore, I simply wanted to show the falsity of that. Now, I don't want to go back over it, and I've got a lot of questions I would very much like to ask. But I'm going to suggest this, that I've read the report, I've read the action plan, and reality, in terms of concrete matters that you've done, it's five flats that you've purchased, of which they are all now occupied. Everything else is planning for the future, and you've been in office now for 18 months. I could take you through each and every one, but it is not considered at this sufficient time. Uh, thank you, Chair. So um, I, I, I uh, wonder if Ian could remind us, uh, I haven't brought my numbers with me, but Ian, helpfully give us the numbers from, uh, if you have them with you, Ian, if you don't, it doesn't matter, but for 2018, 2019, 2020, um, the housing numbers delivered. Uh, uh, the, the housing numbers delivered, 2018, 2019, 2020. Uh, and the uh, a comment to that last uh, comment, Councillor Spink, is there are two very obvious things that this administration have done. One, 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 one. Finished? Uh, have you finished? That's because it's a cabinet and your comment should be at scrutiny. I, I'm going to continue to speak now to speak to you and, and, and your attempts to disrupt this meeting are noted. Two things this administration has done without question. One is to register this authority as a housing provider. Four years of the previous administration did not do it. How they were going to provide social housing, I don't know. That's the first thing. Second thing. I pointed out there was no housing company to trade or to develop. This administration have put into place the correct process, the correct company, and the correct structure to do that. Two things that we've done. Picking up the pieces, picking up the pieces that were left behind, as we do. Thank you. Two things we've done. I'm done. Okay, um, is Councillor Stevens? Did you yes, want I to did want to come back. I, was, I once again give those give those figures out from the, shall we say, uh, twenty eight. Let's go twenty seven to eighteen. Um, 
18 affordable houses completed, 18 to 19 was zero, 19 to 20 was six. And, there, and then, we, then we go on to 21 and 22, where there's a, a total of uh, 240. Well, well, just sit there for a moment and learn. Sit there, sit there and learn. And, and, so you do learn. You learn. Some, you want to learn some manners. Okay, right. That's enough, everybody. Thank you very much. Learn some manners. Um, um, it, it, it would be good if we could, uh, you know, we've got really, we've got kids, I, I keep saying it every every time we have these meetings, that are actually in bed and breakfast. They have to walk the streets during, you know, the weekends because they're in bed and breakfast. The seriousness of what we are trying to achieve, which is like walking through tar and treacle, um, and then being in quicksand where we're tied with red tape and stuff like that. We are working our way through it. We're so serious about the housing situation on the island. And I'm just so sorry that it gets disrupted um, and, 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 and point scoring when it just doesn't need to be that. This is about real people, real lives, broken lives. And I'm sorry, it just makes me very angry. Right, I'm moving Chair, on now. I have some good news to report from my report. About rough sleepers is an additional point for the FBI. Thank you very much. So I'm um, moving on. Um, Councillor Love, are you ready and settled now to do your two uh, reports? That's so that's us. Shall we perhaps conclude the item? <laughs> I'm so sorry. In all of that, I completely forgot. So the recommendation is at the end of the day, we are just noting the housing strategy. Noting. Is everyone in agreement with that? Yes. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry about that, Councillor Stevens. I forgot. Councillor Love, you're are you ready now? You're perfectly entitled to apologise. Unfortunately, we've got other members that can't apologise and do not know a cabinet uh, meeting from a scrutiny. Okay, um, so Councillor Love, so item 5A, so this is the report of the cabinet member for adult social care and public health. This is the Isle of Wight Domestic Abuse and Sexual Violence Commission. Services recommissioning updates, Michael. Um, Councillor Love. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm uh, delighted to introduce uh, the paper tonight uh, for domestic abuse and sexual violence services. Um, it's um, uh, on the back of um, the fact that, in actual fact, I was involved with writing the National Drug Strategy many years ago um, and uh, drug and alcohol services. Uh, and working with people closely are uh, something fairly uh, close to my heart. Um, and so the domestic services funding um, um, in uh, Domestic Abuse Act 2021 uh, set out some new responsibilities uh, for our directors in terms of work. Um, and the theme of in this particular Sorry, I've lost my train of thought now. Sorry. Um, we uh, have been working um, jointly to fund this service, um, um, the Police and Crime Commissioner. And um, we've had some funding, obviously, ongoing from services. One of the things that concerns me quite deeply about the events of the last few weeks in government, really, is, is that. We are no longer as sure with ourselves about what lays over the hill in the future. Um, and so we wanted some uh, flexibility within this, but also we needed support. And remember that um, this is actually about our um, public health director as a statutory responsibility um, for areas. And I just might want to say this. Thanks very much, uh, Councillor Love. So this paper really sets out a couple of things because uh, Councillor Love really helpfully set out. We've had some new responsibilities from uh, the Department of uh, Leveling Up Housing and Communities, uh, and where you, this paper brings that together. Uh, at the same time, we need to recommission the uh, domestic abuse and sexual violence services for the island, uh, and so the paper brings that together. Just to be clear, the responsibilities and the things we are uh, overseeing include uh, 
uh, specialist domestic abuse services, sexual violence and perpetrator programmes, safe accommodation and refuge provision, outreach support, training, counselling, and then uh, provision for survivors of sexual violence. So it's been a quite a broad range, and we've brought that together uh, to work on the island uh, together. I'm really pleased doing that. We've done a comprehensive needs assessment, which is in train. We will base that on people's views alongside the data and evidence uh, to uh, implement service going forward. Thank you, Simon. And also, there's the new burdens funding, which is part of that um, in terms of moving forward. So we um, look to the future, and I'd like to just go without um, spending more time on this than I would necessary uh, to the recommendations. We have an approved spend of up to what were two million five hundred thousand um, for Isle of Wight Council's contribution to the new contract. Bear in mind that this is a joint funded uh, approach. This is based upon, sorry, this is based upon 350,000 per annum for the contract over five years, plus two single year extension options commencing on 1st of October. Cabinet approves the plan for the 2022-2023 domestic abuse allocation. It is recommended that the decision for the future spend of DLU and not the acronym okay, um, uh, allocation in relation to the domestic abuse responsibilities are delegated to the Director of Public Health in consultation with the Cabinet Member and the Director of Adult Social Care on an annual basis. And the reason that it's important to do it on an annual basis is because we cannot see what the future is given that terrible events of the last few weeks and we don't even know what where the money will be in the future so um you know we talk about governance and management and destabilizing the markets um our government has done more harm to the local authorities right across the united kingdom the last two weeks than anything that i've ever encountered in my life so um that is the recommendation and i uh, okay, i'm happy to second that I have to say that um, Councillor Ian Stevens and myself have met with the past, but the current providers, I was really impressed with them up there, and they were so caring, going over and above um, anything they needed to do in order to help um, um, the island. I mean, they, they really did, absolutely exceptional. So um, that's been proposed, it's been seconded. Is there anyone wishing to speak? No, then um, uh, can we move to the vote? All those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Um, Simon, could you please pass on our sincere thanks to all those members, current members, um, um, and future people that will be um, taking over that service. Again, it puts um, priority into what we should be speaking about and not fighting across the table, but this is for people's lives. Um, and that, as I say, I've seen firsthand how they got that first one loaded. Okay, Councillor Love, if you'd like to move on to your next paper, which is the additional spend within the Commission for Substance Use Treatment Contract. Thank you, Chair. So, this is good news for um, Irish people, I believe. Um, and um, it, and it, it's worth over the next three years in the region of a million pounds um, of additional funding. Um, 973,234. So it's not, yeah, just short of a million. Um, and um, uh, this is to help um, support a range of services. Particularly, there is funding allocated within this to rough sleepers. And we've already talked about the issues that have occurred um, with housing. And this gives a small boost. Um, in that particular area, and it helps the services that we currently have uh, develop and move forward. Um, so, um, um, I would like to again now uh, invite my public director just to say a couple of words about this. Thanks very much, Councillor Love. So, this uh, new burdens funding uh, links to the government strategy uh, from uh, Harm to Hope. Uh, so, that really is about taking a whole systems approach to uh, tackling drugs. So, actually, with criminal element, police uh, with treatment element, and then kind of think about a, a, a 
life course change. So is that life course uh, we have been asked when we have set up a new uh, drug partnership, which has actually already started to make a difference, bringing those agencies together, uh, and it's working very well. And we've seen impact, and the money really is helping uh, to work well. And I've seen some brilliant examples of the services working together, particularly on those very vulnerable and more complex uh, clients who've got very complex lives. So uh, I just send this money to again year one is confirmed that the year two and three is indicative i have no uh, reason to believe the money won't be coming however as council loves set out we had a chief uh, prime minister but we have been asking for assurance council love would you like me to read the recommendation it's quite long it's up to you um it'd be helpful um but what, what i would want to say is is that it is that this funding does Provide some assurance in the short term. I'm very concerned about the longer term, and we need the flexibility to be able to adjust as we move forward. Um, the uh, national drug strategy um, is a new um, holistic document, and holistically is how we got to our partners as we move forward. How to move forward. Um, so, therefore, I'm quite happy to be able to Okay, I'm reading the recommendation for the people um, online. So um, the recommendation is one, that the cabinet note the current contract value of the substance misuse treatment service as 7.3819155 year value, just over 7.1 million, and approves an additional 275,155 plus rough sleepers initiative of 100,684.22.23. But the cabinet approves additional spend under the substance misuse treatment contract in line with government funding for years 2023 to 2025 of up to one million pounds three that the cabinet delegates authority to approve this additional spend to the director of public health in consultation with the cabinet member and the director of social care on an annual basis for 23, 24, 25, considering anticipated funding received from Office of the Health Improvement and Disparities and Rough Sleepers Initiative, as outlined in this report. I also add um, my extreme thanks to all those involved in our island concerning health and alcohol services. Um, and I've been up there, met with them um, previously, and the work is outstanding. And it's exactly the kind of service that this island needs in order to move forward. Agree. This is priorities, isn't it? People. Okay, so those were the recommendations I read out um, uh, well, on behalf of Councillor Love. It has been um, proposed by Councillor Love, seconded by myself. All those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. And again, um, a pass on our thanks to the team. Um, that's that's really you know really good money to come into the authority and for us to get it used. Okay, so I'm moving on to item um, 8A on the report now, which is the report of the cabinet member for infrastructure, highways, PFI, and transport, and it's the Isle of Wight Council various streets, East Cows, traffic regulation order. Councillor Paul Brook. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so this is essentially uh, uh, an item that comes out of the development known as Hawthorne Meadows uh, in East Cowes. It relates to the development insofar as it is unadopted or pre-adoption. Um, when this agreement took place, which was uh, page 93, item 7, Based on a Section 38 agreement between the Isle of Wight Council and uh, BPW Trading, which is Barrett Homes. Um, the idea is that the developer um, will pass over to the Isle of Wight Council for adoption the estate. In doing so, uh, if, if this didn't take place, those residents would have no highway support, uh, which would could mean cleaning, surfacing, uh, lighting, and so on. The, the, some of the key services that highways provide, the highways authority provide. 
Um, and so to do that, we have to adopt it to council. In doing so, we have to carry out a safety audit on the, and have done, on the roads that we're adopting so that they meet standards. And there, uh, if you look at page 103, appendix 2, where we uh, sought advice on that from our provider, Island Roads, the letters there, and along with it, the maps that you see in your papers, there are 405 with the proposed amendments so that we are able as a highways authority to safely adopt the, uh, the area. All of, all of the suggestions and proposals come from a safety aspect. Uh, it, is, it has tried to reduce to a minimum loss of on-road car parking spaces, but at the same time, they must be safe for all road users and all residents. And so the proposals on the maps are the suggestions that we adopt to implement, to provide that safe highways for users and to be able to adopt it under the highways uh, authority. It, if we do this, it comes at nil cost to our authority at this current time and therefore under the PFI. Um, the road of Saunders Way, and I'll come to this in a moment, is also part of this plan and proposed changes and is not unrelated to the estate. But I will come to that. So uh, the recommendation is that um, the cabinet approves the proposed restrictions that is subject to this report in relation to the Isle of Wight, various streets, TR order as proposed. Uh, Chair, I'm going to propose because there is some concerns about Saunders Way being open. And I'm going to propose that we add to that if we accept this proposal uh, and put it through that the implementation of the uh, implementation of the TRO that we are approving is subject to Saunders Way being entirely open to vehicle, vehicle traffic. In, in other words, we need to uh, implement these TROs, but that Saunders Way should be open before we do so. So we're asking you to approve the TROs, but that we will not implement it until uh, the developer has finally opened Saunders Way. Happy to take any questions on that, Chair. Thank you for the work that's gone into the, the report. Obviously, um, I declare my interest is the scout of the board, although this is actually in the joint report. Um, um, and, um, I think there's been quite a lot of learning that's come from this. We've inherited a historical development of many years, um, which has been significantly delayed. Um, and that, in fact, many of the TROs may not have even been necessary if it wasn't for the fact that the developers built roads which were too narrow, too twisty, too twindy, without sufficient support over, over a long period of years. And that would be something that I would ask developers in future think about in terms of the um, onward impact of a residence who purchase and buy their properties in these new developments, which are inadequately resourced, really. The, um, there are concerns, as uh, Councillor Bill Jordan's pointed out, um, uh, in relation to uh, Saunders Way. And I would ask that, um, that we um, be able to have a, another look at that as and when it is in full operation, because that will effectively create all kinds of new traffic flow in the town itself. Um, and we want to come back to that at some point in the future, um, because there is no doubt that the impacts of Ogney Saunders Road will create um, all kinds of new issues, which will need uh, a good reflection upon um, in the future. And I hope that um, Council Jordan will be able to be able to do that at some point, perhaps within 
delegated time space of six to twelve months, I would suggest that that's be those thoughts with you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, um, thank you, uh, Carl. The uh, there is a process in place. It may not be here, but it's a PR a review process, um, which is being reviewed across the island and done on a, on a regular basis. But I think it's two years. So uh, I'm happy to discuss that outside of here, whether two years is too long. But the principle of reviewing it, uh, it is, is, is a given and accepted, uh, as we do elsewhere, review our PROs and add or subtract as necessary to the situation at the time. So happy to review it. I wouldn't give a guarantee this evening on whether it's six months or a year, but happy to talk to you outside that with the guarantee that we will review it. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any further questions? Okay, um, all those in favour then of that recommendation? It's unanimous, thank you very much. Okay, so we move to on to um, item number nine on the agenda. Oh, who seconded Councillor Phil Jordan's nomination? Oh, Jonathan did. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we move on to item number nine, which is cabinet member announcements. Um, Councillor Ian Stevens, I think you're first. Well, I just want to touch briefly on the cost of living and you know the event that, um, that was held today down at the uh, um, and we've got we've got a good team at, uh, at the Isle of Wight Council to support it. Our um, voluntary section indeed fitted uh, the dice and uh, and trust and others. So what I want to do is just read read it, read an extract from um, what was passed to me today um, from. Um, we welcome the government announcements on Proscap and the bring residential and business energy units. However, there can be no question that people are still facing major challenges thanks not only to cost of energy, but inflationary pressures affecting food supplements, etc. Our job is to ensure those who need help, advice, and practical assistance know what help is available and how to access it. Working with partners, we can together. Compendium of all help available to Islanders. I'll, I'll find it on the council website. We'll provide this information next week. Keep this updated as new help is announced. We are conscious that not everyone has access to a smartphone or computer and may need help accessing information, but also accessing any relevant support. Our frontline staff, those working with the vulnerable groups, will play a key role in helping people find help where it's needed. Winter's coming event, which was held today at the Riverside Centre, um, been an excellent way for people to get information and know that other information events are being planned. Um, I was pleased to see when I was down there that other Alliance members uh, attended, and, you know, and it was good to see so many of our, our uh, group down there um, listening and taking and uh, taking on the information so that they could pass on to uh, their uh, residents as required. Form spaces, gathering in intelligence regarding your organisation's planning to offer so-called warm spaces across the island, churches across Newport as an example. So be offering warm spaces in our libraries and leisure centres and further information on the warm space at these locations will be published at the end of the month. What I want to say there is that um, I was at Pan. I was at Pan with uh, Ian, Ian Lloyd, uh, our leads on on the um, uh, cost of living and uh, fuel prices, time and poverty, and uh, went to Pan together. I met uh, along with uh, the local councillor, Councillor Brody. I met uh, a really a really good. Um, and, and supportive team, and I thought that uh, you know if, I, I visited them, but there are others around the island that invent the fresh water and indeed ride, um, and the other parts of Newport. But I think that you know working together as we as we are, and um, 
the Isle of Wight Council assisting uh, across the board, making sure that there's um, where there's help needed, we get the help. Where um, help needed, we direct it. We direct the people to help. It's a, it's a great thing. There's no du duplication. Mainly, actually, making making good what we've got. Uh, I think that uh, for me, band together actually showed that. And this morning, I, when I thought through the it's on the positive side of what our voluntary sector. Our people, our people on the Isle of Wight do, and uh, with a little bit of Isle of Wight Council support. Let's hope that we can. So, I did speak with Paul Savile from uh, CAB this morning, and he said he's taken on 10, 10 new, um, if I could say mentors, but ten new advisors uh, on the CAB line. Now I know that uh, Ray Harrington Baldacourt Trust has done likewise. These things don't come cheap. These things sometimes need supportive funding. I'm pleased that we were able to help uh, Ray Harrington Bale, but my council has done that. I'd like to also look and see if we can help the CAB in the same way. It wasn't an exorbitant amount, but it was something that uh, uh, assisted the Footprint Trust in providing a better, better advice and information. Um, so that's all I want to say. It was just bringing it bringing and highlighting the cost of living crisis and our fuel poverty alongside what we had earlier, which I hope that I hope people haven't uh, reflected on a bit of uh, ping pong from certain members, but it is about the homelessness, the plight of our homelessness and the plight of those people that are looking to find their own front door, are looking to support their family in the most appropriate manner. Uh, thank you, Lou. I'll leave it at that. But uh, let's not forget the people outside, outside of County Hall, that need our help. And let's keep on pushing and uh, across the chamber. Let's hope all members uh, get behind the various uh, groups that we can be um, in by and uh, bring forward. Thanks to our, our officers who are actually leading on this. Yeah, yes, it was very good to see so many um, alliance councillors down there today. Um, but more importantly, it was public that were getting a lot of help and support. Um, that will be a triple effect when they go back and then tell neighbours and other people about, um, uh, you know, what they're doing. It, it was it was a really good event, um, and I think they said they weren't going to open until 9:30, but at 9:15 they had people queued outside. So <laughs> they, they it, it, you know, it shows how much it was needed, and I'm glad we're able to support. Um, Councillor Paul Fuller, you're next. Thank you. Um, I've been approached by several members of, of council wanting an update on where we are with the iron planning strategy after last week's full council meeting. Um, I've got a statement. Um, Cabinet notes the outcome of the full council meeting on the 5th of October, where the motion table to agree the draft IPS was not carried. As the meeting ran out of time on the 5th of October, we will await the outcome of the next full council meeting on the 16th of November. Full Council will no doubt agree the reasons the draft IPS is being returned to Cabinet. At that point, we will review these reasons in detail before deciding on the most appropriate course of action. So I wanted to put on record that statement to, make, to allow people to know that the IPS is not dead and buried. So uh, there, there you have it. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I think Sally's online. Sally, you will receive a copy. Of that as you, as you will. Okay, um, thank you for that, Councillor Fuller. I think a lot of people have wanted clarification. Um, Councillor Jonathan Bacon, and then Councillor Bidwan, sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, three things I'd like to mention very briefly. Firstly, um, I've had a few inquiries from uh, people around the island about dark skies, uh, and just to assure people that application is still ongoing. Uh, it seems the criteria have changed a bit from uh, the International Dark Skies Association, but I had a lengthy meeting this morning, um, and we're just going to dot the I's, cross the T's, and hopefully the refreshed application based uh, on what seems to be slightly revised criteria will go in. Uh, I'm reassured, uh, hopefully next month, but certainly before the end of the year. Um, I would also just like to take this opportunity to remind people that the Biosphere Steering Committee is coming together and applications are open until tomorrow. 
uh, it's been a healthy number of applications so far, but uh, uh, the more area. So I look forward to uh, seeing those in due course. Um, third item I'd like to mention, uh, members around this uh, room noted with interest earlier today a rumour that uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg was possibly visiting the island and visiting a renewable energy company. Um, I was going to say that uh, given what has been said in this chamber in meetings in the last week about our uh, energy infrastructure, it would be disappointing that rumour were true and he had chosen not to inform us and to make contact, particularly leader as it was his uh, assistant, I believe, that you spoke to on your trip to Orkney when the uh, issues with uh, energy infrastructure and islands were discussed, and particularly issues affecting the island. However, I was going to say that if the rumours uh, were not true, then fine, but perhaps uh, he might visit us at some point and hopefully uh, tailor his diary so as to speak to us. However, uh, I note that in the last hour or so, local media have confirmed that the visit did take place. Um, so, what I'm going to say is it is very disappointing he has chosen not to contact us, to say, particularly given that contact we had. Um, I hope this visit that uh, has apparently taken place today was not just a damn meaningless photo opportunity, um, as we have very serious issues they discussed in this chamber at least two occasions in the last week or so, um, which I would have hoped he would see, see fit to acknowledge and address. But it appears he has chosen not to, and as I say, that is disappointing. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would agree, actually, with that, actually, um, because I did send his, um, his PA. Actually, I gave her all of our information on what we're doing on the net zero stuff. Um, and how advanced we are, I think, to probably a lot of other places. So I gave her an awful lot of information and just said, you know, keep in touch, anything we can do, anything we can do. So is it a bit of a shame if they, that, that they didn't make any contact um, with us as an Isle of Wight Council? It's, a, it's a sad and we're trying to do so much. And actually, I have to give you credit, Councillor Bacon, you have driven, like the Duracell Bunny, absolutely driven through all of the green, all of the biosphere, all of the net zero. You're absolutely a driving force behind it. And there's been such a monumental change. Um, and it's, it's so heartening when you go to a um, an outside organization where you've got 80, 80 different representations from different people across the island, all trying to work together for the net zero good. And that just raises your spirits, it really does. So, and that's, yeah, I mean, you know, you are the driving force behind it um, in the Isle of Wight Council entry. So I would like um, to thank you for that. Um, Leader, thank, thank, thank you for that. Um, I suppose very briefly, I'll just say, I think we all appreciate around the table. The government is having a few difficulties of its own at the moment, but I'm afraid the fact that we as a council understand had absolutely no contact today uh, in light of the news of this visit means I really have to question whether they are taking this serious, seriously. The issues of renewables. Disappointing, isn't it? Okay. Councillor Andre, hopefully you have a little bit of news. I'm the good news. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor James Evans, um, as we know, can't be here tonight, but she has sent a couple of updates through. So if I can do those first, and then I'll move on to the podium. So the regeneration update the Isle of Wight Council have been allocated. £536,049 from the government under the Rural England Shared Prosperity Fund. This funds capital projects which are tailored towards small businesses and community infrastructure. This will help to improve productivity and strengthen the rural economy and rural communities, which is especially useful for our island. We will be working on putting in our investment plan in November which will work alongside the revenue-based shared prosperity fund. Next, the uh, tomorrow sees the first Isle of Wight cultural conference, which I will also I will be attending, and very much hope that Councillor Jones Evans will be well enough to attend. 
which will see the launch of the cultural strategy consultation. And this is actually um, taking place in my ward at Brown's Turndown um, the day before our fantastic arts and science free family event of Hullabaloo takes place um, this weekend, the 15th of October. For the cultural conference, we have a full day of speakers from the island, from Bournemouth University, Southampton, and Tentest. And there will be performances throughout the day from Stone Crab Scuba Theatre Company. Also, we're making great strides with place based regeneration in the Bay Area. Uh, both Sandal and Shanklin Park Councils have agreed to contribute to a place plan, and Lake Parish Council um, is coming for their council um, a presentation this evening. Um, we've had a follow up meeting with the government's high street task force, which was actually allocated to Sandown as being the high street that definitely on the island that needed the investment. Um, although I have to say it's a consultancy, it doesn't actually come with funding itself. But the meetings that we've had so far have, they have given us a very clear steer of what we need to do to regenerate specifically the high street um, and get the businesses on board. The focus was on the challenge of empty and derelict building sites. And as I say, there were action points that have come out of that, which I have also followed up. There's a further workshop to take place in November with a wider stakeholder group um, to develop a shared vision for the town. One of the um, failings, as it were, that, that was highlighted was that there wasn't a strong vision. And the good thing to come out of that is that everybody is coming together now to to focus on that and on developing that shared vision for the town. And again, it's very important that we bring residents along with us, which we will all be doing. So next on to my own portfolio, a couple of weeks ago, I attended the Isle of Wight Safeguarding Children's Partnership Annual Conference. The Safeguarding Children's Partnership works um, with a number of agencies to keep our island children safe and they do an absolutely incredible job but one special highlight of the conference for me i was absolutely delighted that one of our, our commitments as a, um, an administration certainly within my portfolio is to strengthen our links with the youth council and our youth mp and the conference was actually co-hosted by our youth MP, Oliver McLean, and he did an absolutely fabulous job. He's an absolute star. So that was a really, really lovely event. I'm also continuing with my visits to schools around the island because it's only when I actually go into the schools and I see for real the things that are going on that I actually build the relationships with the, the staff there um, that I can really, really understand what needs to be done. And I'm very grateful for the incredible work that the staff do and the, 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 the investment that is actually going on within our schools. And we are really driving forward with that school improvement. The final thing to say, um, again, there is a jobs, careers and education fair that I know, again, a lot of um, the Alliance members will be attending at the Isle of Wight College on the 26th of October from 11 And I have to say, if you do go to that, it is, there is such a buzz. There's such a lot of people around. We've got an awful lot of jobs um, available, so I do hope get a really good response from the public and it is about people being able to have jobs thinking about careers or actually even just about some form of training um, because we, we desperately need staff in all in um, all areas um, not just on the Isle of Wight Council actually in every sector on the island I think. Thank you very much for that Councillor Andre um, hopefully to see you there so um, item number 10 on the agenda 
it's, it's cut, I've got mouth ulcer, yes. Sorry. Just keep going. Sorry, I forgot about you because you weren't here. I'm so sorry, Councillor Love. If you would like to speak before I move on, yeah. Yes, I, I am sorry. I, I literally have got off the ferry, uh, minus my baggage, which was the Or hence no ties, no anywhere else. Um, uh, no, that's right, I took a seat on holiday. Um, uh, yeah. um, and even whilst I was on holiday, I was sitting, I was actually approached by somebody who spoke about a person um, in one of our um, accommodations here on the island, without a name or say this, um, who's been supported for the last ten, 10 years in respite care. Um, and care. Um, and they felt uh, it was important to come over tell me about how I was treated the services that have been received um, and uh, reminded me about the, the huge efforts that our volunteer sector um, has been making on this island, voluntary carers particularly um, down at the Riverside Centre for Voluntary Service um, Centre there that, that operates in, in Bath. And um, when I visited that, I was stunned by some of the stories that I was told by residents who, in an attempt to, to live a long, independent life, go to all kinds of lengths, things that they would do without in terms of services or dependence. And I think it's really important to recognise them because without them and people looking after elderly relatives and loved ones, um, we would literally collapse as a service because we do not have sufficient people to be able to, to look after those people. And so to them, I wanted to do it for a huge thank you. And but also to say to people out there is that there's no point in staying at home and in silence and suffering when we do have services that we can provide and support. It's really important that we get to as many people possibly to engage with us through the services down here at the Riverside Centre as possible. Backing on to what um, just hearing about the employment um, there, I just wanted again to say, you know, um, earlier this year we had this terrible conflict that occurred out in Ukraine and we know of more than 200 people come to the island on the registered scheme. Um, and in fact, I believe it could be actually double that number because they, we don't actually have all of the figures. But I wanted to say the work ethic and the contribution which many of those people are now making to the island society in all areas um, is outstanding. Without that, it's a far worse place than, than people think. They're working in all kinds of services. Um, Including Isle of Wight Council services, you know, in different ones, which again, it's not fair for me to highlight that. Um, but I just wanted to say that, that that's been a huge um, support to adult social care as well. Um, and, um, uh, and finally, um, being away, but at the same time, I would want to say that without the director of adult social care going that extra mile in supporting um, the Trans, uh, transference scheme from um, home from the hospital to home, we would be, uh, it continues to be very difficult. My appeal would be to try to get more people who have left adult social care services to come back into the We need you now more than ever before. And we realise that we don't pay you enough. We certainly love you lots. Not always feel that, but we do need you, particularly this winter, which is difficult. Thank you, Councillor Love. Yes, we do. We are very grateful for all you do, including that voluntary sector. I've said many, many years now, um, because I've been in a position where I've been able to go and, and visit most of our voluntary services over the years. And if we didn't have them on the island as an island, we would collapse. There's absolutely no doubt about it. They're absolutely valuable. Okay, so I'm moving on to item number 10, which is consideration of the forward plan. Is everyone okay with the forward plan? Just carry on. Yes, all those in favour? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to members' questions. We have none in writing, and there are no additional members here. Um, and so 
there's no additional members online. So um, without further ado, uh, thank you all very much for your time and patience. Sorry for the hiccup earlier in the meeting, but thank you very much. Good night.